Hi, my name is Bob Grinier, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. OK, in the last video, I talked about the transport of material from the ball lightning, or the large macro exotic vacuum object, in the centre of the supernova reactor, and how it could deposit on the outside. I asked the question, how can we determine where the material for the supernova EVO strike marks come from? And I said that I was going to talk about my proposals for that in a future video, and this is that video. The material that we're talking about is these kind of glassy deposits that we see here on various exotic vacuum object strike marks. Now, it will become very, very, very clear what uh, is forming these structures and why I believe they really are an actual structure that is capturing this material and transporting it but we need to establish where that material is coming from and uh, you can see these hexagons and pentagons and uh, truncated uh, hexagons here and uh, it's a, I'm, I'm still quite amazed that no one out there has worked out really what's going on here um, I will work through it I've bought a lot of uh, stuff to make other experiments uh, to make it very, very clear why I am extremely convinced that these particular kind of formations are forming and how you get these kind of internal uh, structures going on uh, that I've identified in these recent presentations. So uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm chomping at the bit to do the experiments to show you uh, how these things are forming and why they're specifically forming in these ways. Even these ones uh, that you see here on the Lion Reactor here and here. Anyway, so back to the subject at hand. And I have come up with a couple of suggestions. And it's been recently made possible because the DIY shops, the hardware stores here, have recently opened. And I'm going to share with you my thoughts and also other things that I'll be doing to look for real-time transmutations potentially. And also for the active action of what's going on in here. Now we don't know that these strike marks were formed across a number of experiments within the supernova reactor before I received it, or whether they all happened in one event. So it would be useful to be able to know if there's anything going on at a particular time and then see a before and after on a maybe a sample area. And so one suggestion was on the inside of the uh, reactor clamshell would be to polish an area or clean it off but that's changing the nature of the reactor and uh, as since we are, it's on loan with, to us I come up with a different proposal and I would like your thoughts on it. So I've been thinking about this for a while and I was able to get into the hardware stores last week uh, because that was now made possible and I bought some aluminium and some uh, brass uh, here. And brass actually is uh, copper, zinc, and I hope it's got lead in here. It typically does have lead uh, anywhere up to, say, 2.5%, 3%, but uh, normally lower than that, depending on the machinability of it. This does seem to be machinable because uh, the concept is to actually take off little billets like this, uh, polish the ends, uh, look at the ends before anything's happened, and then as you see here, in the reactor, what I have done is, uh, this is just indicative of what I intend to do, but uh, you see this mottled area here, uh, that's where potentially there's been a lot of strike marks, and you see these other strike marks that are uh, uh, these little white spots that you see uh, on the inside of the clamshell here. Uh, what I've got here is aluminium, and this is our brass. And these holes were already here. They were 8 uh, millimeters nominally. Uh, I did have to uh, do a little bit of adjustment on the outside of that. But if you go to the outside of the clamshell, you can see them sticking through like this. So I can make a number of these samples off these large uh, uh, rods that I have purchased. And I can do, you know, one per run or whatever. And the other thing I have in there, you may have noticed if I zoom in, is I got a little camera in there. Now, the idea of having this camera in here would be to actually see the action going on in the ball, to be able to locate it in the correct position, get an understanding of what actually causes the ignition, and so forth. I bought this particular one because it was affordable. I think it was about uh, $40, $45 delivered. And it had an 8mm bore, so I could literally just insert it in here. There's a couple of problems. One, it isn't the claimed resolution it said it was. 
and it only has a frame rate of 6.25 frames per second which is shockingly and appallingly low. Now the reason I wanted a camera in uh, looking into this is that the images we have of exotic vacuum objects are those of Ken Shoulders and they are from the 1980s and he used an electronic camera I think uh, with a pinhole. There's work recently by uh, Bogdanovich and I think also you're seeing them in the Sapphire reactor. Uh, the ones that are most clearly defined are, are by uh, Ken Shoulders and it would be great to be able to say if we could capture say uh, uh, an exotic vacuum object uh, like a ball lightning coming through this glass and then coming out into this area uh, using a camera pointing in there that would just be absolutely fantastic but also to to you know do a run uh, uh, and then have a before and after look at these uh, and and know what we saw in the run would be really really useful now there's a problem with this over and above the fact that it's a very slow frame rate and it's not the very high resolution the other one is is that this is going to be extremely bright so um, I'm, I'm about all out of fun, so I'm going to make a request here uh, for about £110. I'm going to do a separate uh, GoFundMe uh, to raise the money for this. Um, but before I get on to that, uh, the, the, the reason I really want to see lead in the uh, uh, brass here is because if we have lead in the brass, uh, uh, then uh, we have an opportunity for fission reactions. Uh, because lead is the heaviest stable element and uh, aluminium is ideal uh, because it's a light element which does seem to really like to take part in fusion and uh, fusion fission uh, nucleon exchange reactions. Um, again we have copper in here and zinc so we have a range of elements and we have plenty of billet to know what the material was that we started with and then we have effectively the before and after across a number of runs. Okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit more about the camera and what I am asking for for your help on this for the experiment. So this is the camera. Uh, undelivered, it costs uh, £60, so there's uh, going to be a £10-£15 delivery charge on that. It has a focal range of 1 inch to 15.7 inches, so this in theory uh, we'll be able to keep almost the entire of the inside of the supernova reactor in focus. So that's really, really good. It also has a very high resolution of uh, 1944p. Uh, so that's going to give us uh, you know, really good look at uh, what's going on in the actual reactor. And uh, so if I go down uh, here... Um, I'm actually offline now, but the important thing is here, it's 30 frames per second. Uh, and that will give us a reasonable chance of capturing things in motion. Uh, it's not such a bad thing to have motion blur, i.e. That's something that's travelling over uh, a distance uh, in time and uh, leaving a trail because it gives you some directional information without having to do post-analysis. So, But 30 frames per second is going to give us a lot more uh, granularity than uh, 6.25 frames per second. So it's about resolution and uh, so forth. I will have to countersink it because it's eight and a half millimeters the head of this particular camera, but that's not so much, so much of a problem. It's not going to affect the actual normal hole size. Now the other thing is about the brightness, I have identified this component which is off the front of a drone uh, uh, lens and it's an ND2000, so this is the strongest neutral filter, i.e. it's not going to colour the uh, um, light coming out, um, but it's going to drop that by 11 stops, so uh, it's essentially like looking through some thick welding glass. And so hopefully we will see bright things uh, without it saturating the camera. Now this is... Uh, £20 again without delivery so this is why I'm asking for about £110 because I lose some uh, money on the um, the actual GoFundMe payment uh, process. So that's that. Now on the subject of light I've actually purchased a diffraction grating and I'm going to try and create a light channel uh, through another one of the holes that you see there in the uh, reactor clamshell and have a look into the reaction as it's happening with a, a separate uh, phone uh, with some software on there recording the uh, spectral output so we can see whether it's just 
you know, uh, oxygen and nitrogen in the air and the carbon emissions, or whether the, during the course of a reaction there are some shifting spectral lines, which will be interesting data as well. But that's that's already on its way in theory, and I need to do some more preparation on that. But really, the big ask uh, for this uh, particular video is, you know. If anyone can help with like five, ten pounds here, there, we could quickly get to the point of having the 110 pounds needed to buy the ND filter here and the high resolution camera here. Okay, so that is my request. Now, this potentially will give us the ability to know if something has come out of the center and actually impinged on this aluminium or brass billet. We know that it's fresh material, we'll have before and after, and we might be able to see the actual action in flight. And also see, potentially, if there's transmutation, because we know it's aluminium, and is there anything else on there? Is it transportation? Is it, is it uh, when, in the case of the lead, is it making lighter elements on there that are not anywhere in the reactor? So there's a lot of opportunity here to potentially see if the evos are just transporting material or doing transmutation on impact so thank you very much for your time and i will see you in the next video